Hello friends, welcome to Affairs Cloud Learn to Lead. This is Ashu and today we will discuss very important current affairs of 30th of June 2021. You can see two best images of the day, but today we will discuss very important and the most important current affairs. But guys, I am requesting you all the students that you have to watch this video till last and you have to like this video, share this video as maximum as possible and you have to subscribe this channel if you are new on this platform. Guys, you can download our application. Application name is Careers Cloud and link of this application is given in the description box after downloading you can log in with your email id and after login you can click on this crack current fair section if you want to subscribe for one year current fair as well as for two year validity of current fairs but the most important thing that we are covering 90 to 95 percent of those current fair which are very important for your exam and guys the price of these subscription are very much low if you see the price you will definitely surprise but how we are covering the current fairs we are providing you daily section in the daily section you will receive three things one is detailed current fair second is the question and answer format of current fair and third is the quiz section which you can attempt on an application on daily basis next is the weekly again you will receive three things one is detailed current fair second is the question and answer format and third is the quiz section which you can attempt on an application on weekly basis and the most important section here is the monthly and we are providing four type of pdfs one is the detailed current fair question and answer format of current fair best 100 current fair will be provided to you that is also provided in the form of question and answer and last is the pocket pdf it means the two liner and the three liners current fair will be provided to you uh, to revise the current fairs in quick format but to enhance your performance further we are also providing some topic wise current fair which are also known as the smart pdfs we are covering 20 most important topics which are very important for every type of exam it means if you want to revise all the current fairs just related to one topic then you have to use these type of pdfs and if you are a banking aspirant especially for the sba ja exam uh, you have to cover three, these three sections. One is the detailed current fairs only related to banking and economy, question and answer format of current fairs only banking and economy and the quiz section which you can attempt on an application on monthly basis. If you want to cover all the past current fair of 2021 just from single PDF, then you have to use this exam PDF. We are also providing budget and economic survey detail also provided, but we are also providing expected question and answer PDF so that you can recall that examiner can ask these type of the questions from budget and economic survey. We are also providing state current fair. It means if you are uh, preparing for your uh, state exam, then these state current fairs will help you. And we are covering every state and union territory. So this is all things. And uh, this is uh, basically covered under one subscription, not different, different subscriptions. And guys, remember, you have to download our application. You have to click on this uh, crack current fair section. Before that, you have to log in with your email ID. And after clicking on this crack current fair section, you can subscribe for one year as well as for two year. Price is very much low. And on that minimal price, we are providing 10% extra discount if you use this code ASH10 and if you have any query you can email us or you can contact us on this number so guys let's begin 30th of June 2021 current fair but I am requesting you all the students that you have to like this video share this video as maximum as possible and you have to subscribe this channel if you're new on this platform this is the only motivation you can give us and guys remember you can join our telegram group from the description box link and here is the first question in the most important question who created history by winning gold in all three recurve events in the archery world cup so first of all you have to remember this archery world cup is hosted by which country and second uh, what is this three recurve events and name of this player is Deepika Kumari so archery world cup is hosted by France and exact place examiner can ask you it is uh, basically the capital that is Fran uh, Paris and guys remember recurve events means women individual team event and the mixed pair events all the three events basically won by this person Deepika Kumari and you can see here Deepika Kumari wins gold at archery world cup remember the hosting country is France capital is Paris and Deepika Kumari is the only Indian woman archer to participate in the Tokyo Olympic this is again very important thing you have to remember gold in the all three recurve events like women individual team event and all the mixed pair events in the archery world cup at the stage three event which is hosted by france and she was ranked as number one our woman archer by the world archery federation after this tournament and over the years she has also won uh, like nine gold 12 silver and seven bronze medal in the world cup so this is very important this question is most important because we are talking about dipika kumari and uh, in the women's team event dipika kumari won the gold medal with the ankita bhagat and the kamolika Bari. And in the mixed pair, in the mixed pair, it is very interesting that Deepika Kumari uh, paired with her friend Atanudas or Atanudas. 
you can remember the name of the husband of Deepika Kumari, Atanu Das, and uh, she was paired in the mixed pair category uh, with her husband and winning gold medal against the Netherlands. So you have to just remember the name of the husband, Atanu Kumar, and uh, he uh, is again very famous uh, archer, very famous. Moving to next question. And remember here, World Archery Federation, because this whole tournament is uh, hosted by World Archery Federation. It was established in 1931. This organization headquarters in Lausanne. Headquarters in Lausanne, Switzerland. Remember this. Moving to next. Who was awarded with Japan's uh, Fukuoka Grand Prize 2021? Fukuoka, basically a city of Japan. And this uh, award is given by the Fukuoka City and the Fukuoka City Foundation. And uh, this is the Japan, one of the highest award. And uh, this, award is, uh, this award is basically given under the three categories. But you don't have to remember all the three categories. You have to remember just the Grand Prize category. And this award goes to P. Senath. Very famous journalist, even founder of People Archive of Rural India. P. Uh, Senath has been awarded with the Japan's uh, Fukuoka Grand Prize for 2021. I already covered this point that this award is given under the three categories. Three categories are basically academic prize, culture prize and the grand prize. The academic prize is given by the Professor Mio of Japan and the arts and culture prize is won by filmmaker uh, uh, Prabda Yoon from Thailand, but you don't have to remember because uh, uh, these uh, names not belongs to India. The award is given to individuals and the organizations for their work in preserving the Asian culture. So now you know that why this award is given to this person because uh, he was working uh, to preserve the Asian culture. And the last Indian to be awarded this prize was A.R. Rahman in 2016. Mm -hmm. And the grand prize was earlier been awarded to Muhammad Yunus from Bangladesh, uh, the pioneer of the microfinance, historian Romila Thapar and Srod Mastro Amjad Ali Khan. But the last Indian who awarded this prize was A.R. Rahman. And remember, 11 Indians have received this Fukuoka prize so far. And uh, the Fukuoka prize was established by Japan Fukuoka City and Fukuoka City International Foundation. And it is given to individuals and organization for their work in the preserving Asian culture. And the prize was established in which year it was established in 1990 and the value of the price the highest will be given in the grand prize the money highest given in the grand prize it is 5 million yen 5 million yen cultural prize 3 million yen academic prize also 3 million yen but grand prize 5 million yen and this prize money given to this person p senath so you have to remember but other options are again very very important here like you can see here the first is vk yadav eminent engineer award of 2020 remember eminent engineer award of 2020 and he was also the first ceo of railway board remember vishavji chatterji uh, he received the indian personality of the year indian personality of the year very veteran actor and remember, this award was given by International Film Festival of India. Next, Anjali Bardwaj. She received International Anti-Corruption Champion Award. Anti-Corruption Champion Award. So, very, very important awards which are given and we covered this. Moving to next section. It is a very important question section, guys. Most important questions are covered. Only two uh, were the most important questions. But you have to like this video, share this video and subscribe this channel and join our telegram group from the description box link. And guys, this is the only motivation you can give us. So please like this video. So here is the first question. Commercial Bank of Kuwait has uh, selected which company for treasury solution to transform its operation? So in simple word, you can say that Commercial Bank of Kuwait will use uh, some services of the Indian company because all are basically the Indian uh, companies except uh, you can say the Wipro and uh, uh, they will use the services of this company to transform its operations like uh, enhance risk management, uh, offer a new generation of asset class coverage and ensure regulatory compliance and this company is guys TCS. It means TCS will provide some services to the Commercial Bank of Kuwait so that they can transform its operation. Very simple question and you can see here Commercial Bank of Kuwait select TCS solution to transform treasury operations especially which branch of the bank it is treasury operations and you can see here treasury solutions under the brand name of tcs bancs was compiled by the tcs financial solutions the business unit of the tcs 
This TCS BANCS is a, a front to back cross asset solution. It will enable this commercial bank of Kuwait to lay a firm foundation for digitization and support in expanding its customer base. It has standardized and well documented API to integrate easy with, uh, with the existing IT landscape of the commercial bank of Kuwait. It means they will uh, establish some type of the application and uh, it will integrate with the commercial bank of Kuwait application and it will, it, it will uh, provide so many services to the customers. It will support Commercial Bank of Kuwait to offer a wide range of cash and derivative treasury products. And it will also integrate various trading and messaging platforms, manage cash and position in real time and offer extensive accounting and reporting capabilities. And a range of asset classes are supported under the solution such as cash products as a foreign exchange, money market, fixed income and equity also will be taken care by TCS. It also covers over the counter and exchange trade derivatives on forex, rates, equity, credit and commodities. But you don't have to remember these type of the uh, technical detail. You have to just remember the commercial bank of Kuwait tied up with the uh, TCS so that they can provide uh, or they can transform the treasury operation of the bank. So this is Tata Consultancy Services. This organization was established in 1968, headquarters in Mumbai. And Commercial Bank of Kuwait, it is the second oldest bank of the Kuwait. Second oldest bank of the Kuwait. It was established in 1960. Don't remember this year because it is not so much important. Move into next question. Which country will provide approximately $9.3 million to build cold chain facilities for the vaccines in India? Especially for the transportation of vaccines, we need a cold chain facility. So this country will help by providing $9.3 million to India. And this country is Japan. So you can see here, Japan to provide India's $9.3 million to help the build cold chain facilities for the vaccines. And you can see here, it is a building a cold chain facility for the safe storage of vaccines and especially for the transportation of vaccines with the cold chain equipment. And Japan, through its emergency grant aid schemes, aims to provide last one mile support for ensuring vaccination to each and every person of developing countries through the United Nations Children Fund or UNICEF. And they are ensuring vaccination to each and every person. And Japan has led operationalization of the COVAX facility. Remember, COVAX facility stands for COVID-19 Vaccines Global Assess Facility for the procurement of vaccines and recently announced 800 US dollar million financial contribution in addition to existing 200 million US dollar. And this is Japan who is leading this COVAX facility. And it should be noted here that COVAX is co-led by Gavi. Gavi stands for Global Alliance for Vaccines and Immunization and it is the Coalition for Epidem uh, Epidemic Preparedness Innovation and the World Health Organization. So remember the Gavi, remember Japan who is leading the COVAX facility and guys remember the Japan is funding so much amount for the cold chain supplies of, for, especially for the vaccines of the COVID-19. And remember about Japan, capital is Tokyo, currency is Japanese yen and the Prime Minister is Yoshihide Suga. Yoshihide Suga. And who is the Indian ambassador to Japan? it is Sanjay Kumar Verma. Sanjay Kumar Verma. You can remember if you want. Otherwise, uh, examiner will not directly ask that uh, Indian ambassador to Japan who is. So, moving to next question. Which bank launched first of its kind flagship business mentoring program named MSME Prerna? We already covered this question. But now MSME Prerna recently launched in Maharashtra and it is launched by Minister of Transport Nitin Jairam Gadkari ji. So this bank is Indian Bank. You can see here uh, Nitin Gadkari launched Indian Bank's MSME Prerna's in Maharashtra. So you have to remember two or three things. One is the name of this MSME program that is MSME Prerna. Second, it is a flagship program of which bank? Indian bank and it is launched in which state? It is launched in Maharashtra and it is launched by Union Minister of Transport that is Nitin Jairam Gadkari ji. Basically, we are celebrating the MSME day 2021 which we already covered in the last session. You can see here Nitin Gadkari ji launched Indian bank MSME Prerna. And this program is launched in Maharashtra, especially if you want to know exact place, then it is Nagpur. It is only important for the Maharashtra students. Otherwise, it is not important the exact place. You have to remember just the name of the state. And the program will be started from M Nagpur, Maharashtra, followed by the other important cities of the state. It is to empower MSME entrepreneurs, especially the women, especially women. And under this program, MSMEs will be trained through capacity building workshops in local languages for skill development and business understanding. MSME will be trained through capacity building workshops in the local languages for the skill development. Even now it is started in Maharashtra, but Indian Bank is planning to extend the program to Andhra Pradesh, to Telangana 
and Gujarat. But it can be extended in the month of July and or the August. But you have to remember it can be extended to Andhra Pradesh, Telangana and the Gujarat. But it is started specially in the Maharashtra. Now, why Indian Bank choose Maharashtra? Because Maharashtra accounts for almost almost 15% of the India's GDP. And it was gained through prominent sectors such as banking, financial services and insurance, entertainment, textile, auto and the auto ancillary space. So that's why they are basically uh, choosing this uh, state that is Maharashtra. So remember the keyword here that is MSME Prerna and its main objective is to develop managerial and the financial capabilities of the MSME entrepreneurs and create awareness on various initiatives taken by the center government and the state government or the Reserve Bank of India or the other agencies, uh, especially for the MSME sector. Now you can also remember about the Indian Bank. Indian Bank is the seventh largest public sector bank and the second largest MSME segment in terms of the percentage growth. And guys, remember it was established in 1907. Its MD and CEO is Padamja, Padamja Chundru. Headquarters is in Chennai, Tamil Nadu and tagline is your own bank, your own bank. So remember these things. Now we are moving to next question. Which organization and Massive Earth Foundation has launched a program named as Low Carbon Dot Earth? You have to remember this name of the program for Asia Pacific region. So you have to remember the keyword Low Carbon Dot Earth is basically launched by one of the NGO which is known as Massive Earth Foundation or it is a non-profit organization uh, under the Companies Act Massive Earth Foundation and the organization name is United Nation Environment Program. So in a bid to boost startup for producing sustainable goods and services by adopting low carbon lifestyles, United Nation Environment Program in collaboration with the Massive Earth Foundation has started four month long program which is known as Low Carbon Dot earth only for the asia pacific region and this is a first of its kind unique initiative for the industry academia partnership so you can see here united nation environment program joins hand with the massive earth foundation launch low carbon dot earth it is for the sustainability accelerator for the asia specific Speci uh, specifically this program is started for the uh, startups so that new startups can adopt the low carbon lifestyle and uh, they can basically uh, go for the challenge of uh, 2050 i'm just changing the color 2050 uh, so that we can become the carbon neutral by the year of 2050 so you can see here it is a four month long program and it is to boost startup for producing sustainable goods and services by adopting low carbon lifestyle this is the main focus and the focus area of this program is entrepreneurship and the innovation in the emerging technologies of the low carbon energy you can say the low carbon mobility low carbon agriculture low carbon packaging low carbon buildings low carbon consumption everything should be low carbon and low carbon dot earth will go live in every region in the asia pacific on a demo day in september 2021 and the program will provide a platform for the startups to interact with the corporates leading technology companies industry mentors to get an understanding of challenges in building scalable businesses with advanced sustainable technology and remember about massive earth foundation it is a non-profit organization its headquarter is in new delhi but you have to remember about unep unep its headquarter is in nairobi kenya Nairobi, Kenya and its executive director is Ayanga Anderson. So you have to remember this. Moving to next question. What is the name of artificial intelligence powered digital identity tag to identify cattle? So the main keyword of this question, it is a artificial intelligence based digital identity tag for the cattle and name of this tag is Surbi e-tag. So answer of this question is A. You can see here, Dwara e-diary partners with the IFCO Tokyo and launch digital ID tags for cattle insurance. So Dwara e-diary solutions private limited, a portfolio company of the Dwara holdings in partnership with IFCO Tokyo general insurance private limited launched an artificial intelligence powered digital identity tag named as Surbi e tag. You have to remember the name Surbi e tag to identify cattle based on the muzzle identity. So you can hear, uh, uh, see here Dwara e dairy captures muzzle images of the cattle with the mobile phone using Surbi mobile application and stores them in a secured cloud server as a unique digital ID like our face recognition system. So uh, Dwara e dairy will capture the muzzle images. Muzzle images stand for the protecting part of an animal face, like including the nose and mouth. They will capture the images and they will store these images on the Surbi mobile application and store them in the secured cloud server on a unique digital ID because you can uh, basically 
use this type of the IDs in future to recognize the cattle. And the Surbi e-tag has dis digital IDs and high resolution muzzle images of the cattle that are captured using advanced artificial intelligence and machine learning technology. So why we are using this type of the artificial inter intelligence technology, especially for the cattle. So the main issue it was due to lack of tamper proof, scalable and unique uh, digital identity of the cattle. Cattle insurers are facing higher loss due to moral hazard. Hence, accurate cattle identification has become the key requirement of the cattle insurance companies. So, uh, to give a claim or to take a claim, you have to uh, give some, uh, you can say, uh, the exact proof of the cattle that this cattle belongs to uh, um, uh, me. That's why this uh, new type of the artificial intelligence technology was started. And Surbi eTag has the digital ID and high resolution muzzle images of the cattle so that we can recognize the cattle and it will use the artificial intelligence and machine learning technology. The unique cattle uh, muzzled identity could be assessed using the digital ID and retrieved anytime by the insurance company from the cloud server within the 60 seconds to compare in the real time that this cattle belongs to which person and uh, what is the insurance amount of this cattle everything can be within 60 seconds. Uh, so this is very good technology for the cattle insurance and the company insurance company here is IFCO Digital. So remember IFCO Tokyo Journal Insurance Company. So remember these things. These are very, very important. Especially uh, you have to remember it is a Dwara e-dairy partners and it is the uh, insurance company IFCO Journal Tokyo Insurance Company. And guys remember uh, Dwara e-dairy solution is a Chennai based or Tamil Nadu based company and IFCO Tokyo Journal Insurance headquarters is in Gurugram. Haryana, but you don't have to remember when it was established who is the MD and CEO. Just remember this news. Moving to next question. Which cricketer became the youngest Indian to make debut in all formats? Now, all formats stands for test matches because we are talking about the cricket. Test matches, T20 and the one day international so this cricketer became the youngest indian to make debut in all formats if we are uh, combining the male and the female cricketers we are talking about all cricketers so answer of this question is shefali verma so indian opener shefali verma become the youngest indian to make debut in all formats test match t20 and the one day international and verma belongs to which state verma belongs to haryana so you can also remember this so see here Indian opener Shefali Verma becomes the youngest Indian to make debut in the all formats and Shefali Verma took 17 years and 150 days to make her debut across all three cricket format, uh, uh, especially for India. And if you are talking about globally, then she became the fifth youngest cricketer overall in the list headed by the Afghanistan Mujib or Rahman. So you have to remember the youngest cricketer who debuted in all three format is Mujib or Rahman. But Shefali Verma became the fifth youngest cricketer overall all over the world in the cricket, uh, you can say players. But in India, she became the youngest. So remember this. And recently we covered question about the Shefali Verma. Shefali Verma become the became the first Indian woman cricketer to hit three sixes in a test match. To hit three sixes in a test match. So you can also remember this news about Shefali Verma. Moving to next question. National Statistics Day is annually observed on the 29th of June. This day commemorates the birth anniversary of which person? So answer of this question is PC Mahan Lobbies. And guys, this day is celebrated on 29th of June every year to popularize the use of statistics in everyday life and uh, you can say uh, sensitize the public as to how uh, statistics help in shaping and framing policies. So remember this day also commemorates the birth anniversary of Padam Bibushan. Padam Bibushan, Professor PC Mahan Lobbies, who was referred to as the father of Indian statistics. So you can see here 2021 National Statistics Day celebrated on 29th of June. And PC Mahan Lobbies was also known as the father of Indian statistics. And what is the theme of this day? Sustainable Development Goal Number 2, which stands for End Hunger, Achieve Good Food Security and Improve Nutrition and Promote Sustainable Agriculture. This is the theme of National statistics day but you have to remember sustainable development goal number two is the theme and 29th june was declared by the national statistics day by the former prime minister manmohan singh and national statistics day is celebrated at the national level to recognize the contribution of professor pc mahal lobbies uh, towards the establishing the national statistical system and the first national statistical day was celebrated on 29th of june 2006 remember 2006 and uh, the organization is very important isi is here 
here. ISI stands for Indian Statistical Institute. Remember, Indian Statistical Institute. And this institute was basically uh, started by PC Mahalob, is one of the founder of uh, this institution. And this institution headquarter is in Calcutta, West Bengal. Calcutta, West Bengal. And who is the director currently? Director is Sangha Mitra Bandha Apadhyay. Sangha Mitra Bandho Apadhyay. You can remember if you want, otherwise it is not so much important. Now we can move to the next question. China launched two units of its world largest by Hethain hydro power station. This is, uh, this is situated on which river? So you have to remember the name of this hydro power station. The name is by Hethain power station or the hydro power station. It is the world largest hydro power station which is situated in China. And uh, this is situated on which river? This is situated on the Jinsha river. You have to remember Jinsha river is the upper section of the longest river of China and the longest river of China is Yangtze river. So remember the name of the longest river of China. It is Yangtze river and Jinsha river is the upper section of this longest river of China. And you can see here this is the uh, basically model of a uh, 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 world largest hydropower station which is known as Bai Hethen hydropower station. And China launched two units of its world largest Bayatan hydro power station worth rupees 34 billion USD. Basically, this power station is equipped with the 16 hydro generating units, each with the capacity of 1 million kilowatts. So it means total installed capacity of this unit is 16 kilowatt or 16 million kilowatt. All the units will be operational in July 2022 with the generation capacity of over 62.4 billion kilowatt hour of electricity every year on an average. So it is the largest single unit capacity in the world. So this is a huge thing. All the world is basically suffering COVID-19, but China is developing so many things uh, on this time. So this is very good thing about China. So China has already built three gauge dam, about 220 billion yuan, that is again 34 billion dollar on the Yangtze River. So you have to remember these things that these dams are basically belongs to China and these dams are situated on which river this is again very very important. So after full operation uh, operationalization of these dams it is expected to save approximately 19 million tons of standard coal and reduce carbon dioxide emission and China can cover all China uh, by the year of 2050 as a carbon neutral China. So recent related news you have to remember about China. China opened its 5G signal base at the world highest radar station which is known as Ganbala radar station. We covered this question in the most important section because it is located at a height of 5374 meter and it is uh, located in the remote Himalayas of the China Tibet autonomous area. So these things are very very important about China and guys remember there are very important passes uh, which are uh, between India and China. One is the Niti Pass. You have to remember Niti Pass is in between Uttarakhand and Tibet. Tibet is autonomous area of China. So remember this. And uh, next is Shipkila Pass. Shipkila. So remember when uh, you see the word La. La stands for pass. And it is in between Himachal Pradesh and Tibet again because uh, Himachal Pradesh is sharing boundary with the Tibet or the autonomous area of China. Next is Nathula Pass, very important pass and very strategic pass because it is in between Sikkim and again Tibet or China. Next is Jalepla Pass, Jalepla, it is again in between Sikkim and China or the Tibet. So you have to remember these four passes, Niti Pass, Shipkila Pass, Nathula Pass and Jalepla. And if you uh, move from, uh, you can say west to east, then first comes Shipkila, then comes Niti, then come Nathula and then come the Jalepla Pass. And China's president is Xi Jinping, capital is Beijing, currency is Yuan or RMB. So you can remember this. Moving to next question. Which organization and United Nations hosted national convention on the prevention of obesity? So answer of this question is Niti Ayog. So on 24th of June 2021, Niti Ayog, that is National Institution for Transforming India and United Nations hosted a national convention or the consultation on prevention of maternal, adolescent and childhood obesity in New Delhi. It is hosted in New Delhi. So remember this under the chairmanship of Dr. Vinod Kumar Paul, who is currently the member of Niti Yog, but you don't have to remember the name of this person. And during the meeting, obesity was addressed as a silent epidemic, silent epidemic. So its main aim of this convention is to create policy options uh, for the prevention of overweight and the obesity in children, adolescents and the women in India, covering health, education and the food system program. And the meeting was on the sidelines of the result of National Family 
फैमिली हेल्थ सर्वे नंबर फाइव विच रिवील्ड ए वरिसम ट्रेंड ऑफ इंक्रीजिंग ओवरवेट एंड ओबेस्टी अमंग इंडियन चिल्ड्रन अडोलिसेंट एंड दी वुमेन सो इंडिया इज कमिटेड टू अचीव वर्ल्ड हेल्थ असेंबली टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी फाइव सस्टेनेबल डेवलपमेंट गोल टू थाउजेंड थर्टी ऑफ नो इंक्रीज इन ओबेस्टी सो इंडिया हैव टू फॉलो दिस टाइप ऑफ द प्रिंसिपल टू कवर दिस साइलेंट एपिडेमिक एंड वी हैव टू स्पेशली फोकस ऑन द हेल्थ एजुकेशन एंड द फूड सिस्टम प्रोग्राम सो दैट वी कैन रिड्यूस द ओवरवेट पॉपुलेशन एंड द ओबेस्टी पॉपुलेशन स्पेशली इन चिल्ड्रन अडोलिसेंट एंड दी वुमेन सो यू हैव टू रिमेंबर इट is hosted by new delhi or new delhi uh, is you can say uh, the main center of this convention and it is hosted by united nation and niti ayog so these are the keywords moving to next question which indian navy ship has been deployed to participate in the russian navy day celebration and joint exercise with the friendly navies in africa and the europe it means this uh, indian naval ship will do some exercises with the countries and also will participate in the russian navy day celebration and this uh ship is ins tabar so you have to remember the name of this ship ins tabar and uh, this tabar started its journey on the 13th of june and will visit the number of places till september 2021 it means it is a 3 uh, to 4 month journey and tabar will move across the gulf of aden you can see here the gulf of aden it will move through the gulf of aden after that it will go to red sea this is the red sea and after that it goes to the mediterranean sea and after that it goes to united kingdom and uh, uh, the french area and the russia so this is the traveling map of this uh, ins talwar and guys remember bilateral exercise like exercise konkan you have to remember it is with the united kingdom exercise varun with the french navy and indra that is india and russia with the russian navy it will be conducted with this ins talwar so these three exercises are very important varuna all the students know indra that is india and russia konkan you have to remember it is in between india and the united kingdom and ins tabar is a talwar class stealth frigate and it is commanded by the captain m mahesh but you don't have to remember the name so it is a part of india's navy western fleet which is based at mumbai so remember where is gulf of aden red sea and mediterranean sea two things you can more remember here uh, this uh, red sea is basically red sea is basically dividing uh, africa and asia you can remember this this red sea basically dividing africa and asia but you can also remember this mediterranean sea mediterranean sea is also dividing africa and upper is europe so remember this so this is again very important here is strait of gibraltar so uh, strait of gibraltar or strait of gibraltar it is also dividing also dividing mediterranean sea and you can say the north atlantic ocean here is the north atlantic ocean. so these questions are again very very important so this is a suez canal you can also remember here this is a suez canal and this is connecting mediterranean sea and red sea so it was opened in 1869 1869 moving to next question and it is from picture and question is apurva chandra secretary of labor and employment completed his tenure as the chairman of the governing body of international labor organization so you have to just focus on this name or you have to just remember the name apurva chandra basically in october 2020 india assumed the chairmanship of the journal uh, body of the international labor organization after 35 years after 35 years and apurva chandra um has been elected as the chairperson for the time period of october 2020 to june 2021 now june 2021 uh, is almost completed so that's why indian chairmanship now over and this governing body is the apex executive body of the international labor organization and decides policies programs agenda budget and elects the director general the chairperson will preside over the general body's meeting uh, which will be held thrice in a year and in march june and november and the policies of ilo will be set up a international labor conference which meets once in a year in geneva switzerland so you have to remember about international labor organization it was established in 1919 after the world war 1 its headquarters is in geneva and remember the countries 187 countries are member of ilo so remember world bank countries are 189 IMF countries are 190 and uh, ILO countries are 187 United Nations countries are 193 so you have to remember this information this is very very important now moving to next question and uh, the important thing under this question India is the founding member of ILO and has been a permanent member of ILO since 1922 otherwise India was the member uh, from the 1919 but become the permanent member of ILO in 1922 this is again very important 
Moving to next, again, this question is from picture and it is uh, Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman announces the relief package again. That is 6,28,993 crore. Exact amount you have to remember if you are appearing in the SBJA exam. And it is uh, for the support of Indian economy in flight against COVID-19 pandemic. And uh, this is divided in these sections. You can remember uh, loan guarantee scheme for COVID affected sector. It is 1.10 lakh crore. Emergency credit line guarantee scheme. Again, additional allocation is provided 1.5 lakh crore. Credit guarantee scheme for micro financial institutions 7500 crore. New scheme for public health 23,000 almost. Loan guarantee scheme for the tourist guides and it is for 100 crore. You have to just remember this amount because this can be asked in the SB exam. Only in the SB exam otherwise it is not so much important that exact amount can be asked. The government has announced 8 schemes to provide uh, 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 impetus uh, for the growth and the employment in India. Especially for the employment in India. And Union Minister Nimla Sitaraman, Finance, Karnataka is the constituency. Minister of State is Anurag Singh Thakur, constituency is Hamirpur, Himachal Pradesh. So remember this. Moving to next question. Who was the founder of McAfee? Who was the founder of McAfee? Antivirus software recently passed away. Very, very important question. You have to remember this. This will come definitely. Answer of this question is John McAfee. So he was belonged to England and guys remember he was 75 years old and the founder of McAfee antivirus software and he was found dead in a prison outside Spain outside you can say Barcelona in Spain after Spain's national court approved his extradition to the United States of America over multiple tax fraud charges. He was born in United Kingdom or exact places uh, Cinderford Cinderford Cinderford. And McAfee Associates, the antivirus software company was started in 1987. So the most important thing, he was the founder of McAfee Antivirus, which is the, you can say, uh, used by uh, um, so many people till date uh, uh, in the computers for the antivirus software. So John McAfee, you have to remember. Moving to next section, it is our important question section. You have to like this video, share this video and subscribe this channel. If you're new on this platform, please join our Telegram group from the description box link and this is the only motivation you can provide us by liking this video and by sharing this video as maximum as possible. Here is the question. Former caretaker prime minister of which country Mir Hazar Khuso passed away? So very simple question. You have to just remember the question as in slide. Answer of this question is Pakistan and you can see here the picture. So he served as the caretaker prime minister of Pakistan uh, from 25th of March to 5th of June in 2013. He was a judge by profession and served as the Chief Justice of the Federal Shariat Court. So remember the name, name is Mir Hazar Khoso and uh, he belongs to Pakistan. He was basically the caretaker Prime Minister of Pakistan. Moving to next question, again it is from picture, Malayalam cinematographer filmmaker Sivan passed away. You have to remember three keywords uh, that uh, he was Malayalam cinematographer or uh, examiner can ask in the option that he was filmmaker, name is Sivan. Or you can remember the full name of this person that is Shiva Shankaran Nair. Shiva Shankaran Nair. You can remember the full name and popularly known as the Sivan. He passed away after suffering a cardiac arrest and uh, he belongs to which state? He belongs to Kerala. By the language, you can guess that he belongs to Kerala. And Sivan was popularly known as Kerala's first professional press photographer. Kerala's first professional photographers in 1959 he opened a studio with the name of Sivan Studios in Kerala and which was very popular and now a hub of the cultural affairs and he has won the national award three times in his career and he was well known for his work as the still photographer of the national award winning Manayalam film uh, uh, so many films basically so remember the name Sivan or you can remember the full name Siva Shankaran Nair and he belongs to Kerala and he was very famous Malayalam cinematographer filmmaker. Now moving to the one line in important section here is the first question or the first uh, line Swedish Prime Minister Sefton Lofven resigned after no confidence vote. So guys you have to remember the former Prime Minister of Sweden it is Stefan Lofven. So remember the name it is a Nordic country in the northern Europe and the capital is Stockholm currency is Swedish Krona. But now this Stephen Lofman resigned due to uh, uh, loss of uh, uh, confidence vote in 2021 uh, uh, when the left party withdrew its support from the Lofman government. And he was appointed uh, as a prime minister of Sweden in 2014 and he secured the second term in 2018 election because in the Sweden, uh, the time period of prime minister is four year. So next question, Ikkes uh, Turkami or Turkami. Tukrami, new spider species named after 2611 martyr Tukaram Ombele. So scientists of Maharashtra have discovered the new species of spiders in Maharashtra 
and named one of the spider as Ikis Tukarami, uh, uh, one of the, you can say, the Mumbai Police Assistant Sub-Inspector uh, who was killed during the 26-11 terror attacks in the city. So, you have to just remember, uh, it is a species of spider. Enforcing Contracts Portal launched by the Department of Justice. So, the keyword here is Enforcing Contracts Portal. Its main aim to improve the ease of doing business in India. So, uh, you can remember uh, it provides up-to-date information all commercial cases in dedicated commercial courts in Delhi, Mumbai, Bengaluru and the Calcutta. Online reporting by all high courts regarding the mediation and the arbitration centers next to the commercial courts in order to maintain pre-institution mediation and the settlement of the commercial cases. But you don't have to remember this technical uh, information. You have to just remember Enforcing Context Portal is uh, recently launched by uh, uh, this Department of Justice. And remember, uh, Ministry of Law and Justice comes under Union Minister Ravi Shankar Prashad, constituencies Patna Sahib, Bihar. And remember, Chief Justice of India recently S.A. Bobde launched one portal which is known as SuPace. Remember, SuPace. SuPace stands for Supreme Court Portal for Assistance in Court Efficiency. It is the first of its kind artificial intelligence driven tool in the world that collects relevant facts and laws related to the case. Next, Umesh Sina reappointed as the Deputy Election Commissioner of India. So, remember the appointment committee of the cabinet recently approved the extension in the term of re-employment of the Umesh Sina as a deputy election commissioner on the contract basis. The appointment is made for one year up to July 2022. Remember, it is for the one year. And Umesh Sina was a 1986 uh, IS officer who was reappointed as his age of superannuation. And he was earlier served as the chief uh, election commissioner of Uttar Pradesh, chief election commissioner of Uttar Pradesh. So, you can see one very important thing that is a coincidence that can be the coincidence that Deputy Election Commissioner Umesh Sina uh, was uh, uh, the IS cadre of uh, Uttar Pradesh and you can also remember uh, recently appointed recently appointed Anup uh, Chandra Pandey also uh, uh, from the uh, Uttar Pradesh cadre and uh, Sushil Chandra also uh, from the Uttar Pradesh cadre that is again uh, a coincidence Rajiv Kumar is again one of the election commissioner also uh, from the Uttar Pradesh cadre. So all the four persons especially the three persons that is uh, Rajiv Kumar, Anup Chandra Pandey and Sushil Chandra all belongs to Uttar Pradesh cadre. So this is a uh, you can see the coincidence or it is uh, because of the 2022 UP election. So, uh, you can see here. So, next question is International Day of Tropics 2021, 29th of June. So, it is United Nations International Day of the Tropics, which is celebrated annually. And uh, uh, it is observed across the globe on 29th of June to celebrate the diversity of the tropical region and to highlight the challenges and opportunities faced by the nations of the tropic. It is to create awareness about the difficulties faced by the tropical areas and the issues affecting the world tropical zone. And the United Nations General Assembly adopted this resolution in 2016 and proclaimed 29th June as a International Day of the Tropics and first time it was celebrated in 2016. Next, Justice Ravi Vijay Kumar Malimath appointed as the acting chief justice of the Himachal Pradesh High Court. So, he was appointed as the acting chief justice of the Himachal Pradesh High Court. Earlier, uh, the uh, chief justice was Lingapan Narayanan Swami, but uh, he retired on the 30th of June 2021, it means today, and he was appointed by the exercising of power comfort under the article 223 of the Constitution of India. Constitution of India. So, remember this. Moving to question of the day, what was the question of 29th of June 2021? Uh, what is the type of the banking which involves banking services for the high net worth clients like corporate, commercial bank and mid-sized companies, etc.? It is basically uh, not known as merchant banking, not known as narrow banking, not retail banking. It is known as wholesale banking. So, remember the answer is wholesale banking. Now, you have to remember one important thing here that uh, uh, what is the main purpose of this wholesale banking? So, I already covered under the question that wholesale banking provides banking services for the high net worth clients. Any high net worth clients like corporates, company banks, mid-sized companies and it is provided by banks to organize all the clients related to high net worth. So, you have to remember it is wholesale banking. Moving to the question of the day. 
as per the section 31 of the RBI, again, you have to remember one section of the RBI, who can issue and accept promissory notes that are payable on the demand in India. Earlier, we covered a question that RBI can issue the currency notes under the section 22 of the RBI Act. But now we are talking about the promissory notes that who can issue the promissory note uh, uh, on the uh, payable on the demand in India and, and it comes under the section 31. You have to answer me only in the comment box. I'm waiting your answer. So you have to like this video, subscribe this channel and share this video as maximum as possible i am waiting your response because this is the only motivation you can give us and guys please press this bell button and please join our telegram group so that you can uh, receive the notification on time and it is a fierce cloud promise and it is my personal promise that if you're watching the videos regularly and if you're reading the current affairs from the pdf your current affairs section will go strong and you can subscribe our pdf from our application application downloading link is given in the description box you can subscribe for one year as well as for two year price is very much low if you see the price you will definitely surprise and on that minimal price we are providing 10% extra discount if you use this code ASH10 and guys don't take life, life so much serious life is fun always be happy don't take life so much serious thank you guys take care bye bye